Greetings, this is Rebecca McCarthy for CMST 245 and today I want to talk to you a little bit about the Storify assignment. Throughout the term we're going to be switching to two main assignments. Either you'll be asked to define terms and concepts from your reading in a rather serious and involved way or you'll be asked to create special stories using the Storify software. Storify is a piece of software that any registered user can use for free that allows us to create stories or narratives uh, pulling from different content on the internet. What we pull on is from what's considered public domain content. Uh, public Facebook updates, public Twitter updates, uh, videos, YouTube, Vimo, ebooks, Wikipedia, all sorts of information and images that are publicly available and legally available on the internet. We pull all these pieces of information together, all these different streams of voices from other people, in order to create a new narrative or story. Of course, we are in control of this process because we're controlling the story itself. We come up with what our story is going to be about, we come up with basically what our thesis statement is going to be, and then we search around for different points of view and different pieces of information that help support us and bring together a narrative. It's a very interesting process, but it's also very time consuming, so I want you to be aware of that. What's so interesting about this is that this particular software and the process actually brings to the table and demonstrates in a very uh, concrete way many terms and concepts that we are going to encounter in this class and in our reading rhetoric online. One of the terms that this uh, software actually exemplifies is this concept of intertextuality. You're going to come across this term in a couple weeks from now. Intertextuality is this idea that we bring together many different texts in our lives, many different voices, in order to create a narrative. That we are not somebody who actually composes alone, in a vacuum if you will, solitarity. We actually rely on not only our past histories and relationships and everything that we have been composed to, but we also rely on the thoughts of others and the publishing and everything else of others. I mean, when you write an academic paper, right, you cite other authors to help support your point. Something very similar happens with Storify. Uh, indeed, with Storify, we wouldn't be able to create a narrative if we didn't use other people's words and concepts. So we get to see the idea and how te intertextuality functions in a very real way. Storify also uh, presents these concepts of identification and division. Identification is a theory of rhetoric that was placed forth by a great scholar by the name of Ken Kenneth Burke. Kenneth Burke believes that unlike uh, Aristotle's original definition of rhetoric as simply a way to persuade somebody to agree with you, Kenneth Burke said that we don't simply try to persuade people. What we try to do is we try to get somebody to identify their cause with our cause. We try to make a real major connection, and that's a lot different than simple persuasion. If I just want to persuade somebody, I could use many different forms of trickery. If I want to create identification, that means I want to make a lasting alliance. We are going to use Storify to create identification. Indeed, we're going to be looking for other people who have similar ideas as our own, and we're going to ask them, in, in a way, by bringing in their content into our stories, in order to identify with us and our storytelling process. But this also um, lends itself to division because sometimes we want to show the other point of view and to demonstrate how the other point of view is not important. And identification is very important with division, this concept of division, because often we create identification by just demonstrating who doesn't fit in, right? Who divides out, right? And so uh, when we do our storifies, we might end up finding people who disagree with us, but we might use their words to exemplify or to demonstrate how they don't agree or how a certain section of people do not agree with our premise in our story. We're also going to look at rhetorical uptake. That's another term that you'll come across this term. And um, it's viral and memes. So I think we're all, for the most part, uh, familiar with this idea of viral videos and what a mem is. We're also going to look at interactivity and public versus private. And these are two terms that you're going to come across today. All of these terms actually come to... Uh, 
fruit within the Storify application, postmodernism versus communityism, and also often anti-institutional politics or what we like to call counterpublics that is using stories and narratives to protest something in order to make a point. Storify is amazing because really it demonstrates if you will, the core of many of the new ways of communicating that is occurring on the internet and how we are changing the way we communicate and bring together stories and ideas. So that's why we are using this particular program for this class. We're going to start with a Storify assignment this week, but then we're going to leave this assignment down for a little while while we look at terms and concepts so that we can come become a little bit more familiar, that is better familiar, with terms and concepts in this class in order to make better stories. All right, so there's some questions that I've already received about Storify. One of them is, do you need to sign up to Facebook or Twitter? Actually, you don't. All you have to do is sign up to Storify, okay? Once you're in Storify, you're going to be able to use other people's public tweets and other people's public Facebook posts for your own composition, okay? As long as they haven't put on their privacy settings that says nobody can see this but my friends, for example, then it is free to use because it is out there on the internet. Every tweet, unless it is a private message tweet, is a public tweet. If you say something on Twitter and it's not a personal message between you and one other person, then it is a public message. All right, so you don't actually have to sign up for these different programs in order to use Storify. Another question I received is whether or not what type of story I'm looking for. Well, I don't want to put a cap on this, and the reason I don't want to do this is I want you to Look to your own passion, look to your own individual thoughts about the world around you and to create stories there, all right? So the one thing I don't want you to do, though, is write a story about yourself. I'm sure you're an extremely interesting person, but when we create Storify stories, we're creating something very public. And you want to garnish a larger audience other than just your friends and families. Now, if you were somebody who was terribly famous, you probably could write a story about yourself and garnish a very large audience. But unfortunately, probably most of us aren't that famous. And so you're not going to be able to pull on that. What I suggest is to look at the news stories that are um, breaking ground right now and also to reflect on the readings that you're doing in class to try to decide, well, is this something that interests me? You might want to talk about issues of sustainability. Um, you might want to talk about uh, what's going on right now with our government. Um, you might want to talk about taxes. You might want to talk about tax reform. You might want to talk about what the war is about. You might want to talk about something frivolous but might be out in the news, such as a famous star and some kind of trouble they've gotten themselves into. But whatever you write a story on, it needs to make a point. That's why I emphasize this idea of a thesis. Now, I know that we often think of thesis statements just being something involved with academic paper, but a thesis statement is your point. It is your argument, right? So if you're going to tell a story, you have a point. Whether we call it a thesis statement or a theme, there is a point, and I want to make sure that there's a point to your story, that there is a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end, and that you are making some kind of point or argument, okay? So if you're not sure about your story and if it's something that other, would engage other people, feel free to send me an email, and I'll be happy to review it with you. And that's all I have for the overview of this particular assignment. As I said, we're going to be doing many of these little Storify assignments throughout the term. So the first one might feel a little shaky to you, and that's okay. You'll get better at it as you work with it more. And I truly hope that this will also be a fun and interesting assignment as well. Thank you very much, and I will see you on the discussion boards.